imagine a game wherein you can just set uh, set an organism loose and let it evolve over a period of time, right? And let's say you have you made something that was a human, like a human-like thing, and then instead of just letting humans evolve over like millennia, you just said, "All right, I'm just gonna see what uh, see this this thing that I've made on the computer. I'm gonna make it in real life," and you've got like this massively evolved creature that didn't have to physically evolve and it's just been made um in its evolved form yeah, exactly form, yeah. and if you want to believe in a creation myth then there you go god ran some simulations and just did it spat us out yeah there you go there you go seriously though it's it's really it's really bloody cool so you've got this living thing that has uh, basically gone to all this evolution on a supercomputer but it's just been made in real life and it's able to uh self locomote as in it's able to Look them up. Yes, it's able to. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it's able to move. Um, it's able to move by itself. Um, it can uh, basically swim through uh, like a, like a sort of solution of. I mean, like a, a like a solution made of water. Um, it can live for like days up to weeks because it's made of these embryonic stem cells, which have got the uh, which have got the energy stores, um, and it can interact with its environment. Um, it can like it can have specific behaviors just based on like um, based on the like, sort of movements that it kind of has to follow because of its like sort of simple design. Mm -hmm. um, think of it like do you know, do you have proteins don't have like a brain or um, a sort of central nervous system or anything. But proteins can perform specific tasks, right? Like you've got yeah. proteins like enzymes, which can uh, speed up reactions. You've got proteins that do any number of things. And the reason they do that is just by having a specific structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, that, a, like, um, like a molecule. Exactly. Like yeah. a molecule. Yeah. And I mean, a protein is literally just a, just a, a molecule that has yeah. like a, like, the, like just a very complex molecule. And the, these little living things kind of operate less, I think, like living things and more like just very complex molecules because that's kind of almost what they are, right? If you if you say this is, it's, it's instead of like saying, okay, we've got hydrogen and oxygen, right? And we're going to stick them together in this way and it's going to have all these properties. You've got um, skin, you've got like basically skin tissue and muscle tissue. We're going to pop them together in this configuration and it's then got all these properties. Yeah, it's like... It's like when you put things in this specific order, this is the thing that happens. It requires a sort of change in your, like how you conceptualize the world. It reminds me of um, Richard Dawkins' Selfish Gene, where he talks about like some of the earliest forms of, um, like structure in the universe being these uh, this idea of this thing called replicators, mm. which are like they are they are collections of atoms which, by their structure replicate themselves as in as in they don't do that they don't do it deliberately they're not even alive the structure just by over millions of years different atoms bouncing into each other and stuff um the structure is a structure that creates more of itself and no one's doing it and there is no life or consciousness going on it's just like if you make this structure it will come across the the building blocks of itself in the environment and will produce more of it. It's so weird. You've basically just described life. I mean, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Um, and life is just a really complicated version of that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. and like, because if you, let, let, let's like, like, let's go back to that and break it down because I think it's really interesting for everyone listening. Mm. So you've just said that um, you, you, there are these um, sort of molecules that come together. But when they bump into um, constituent parts of themselves, they just make themselves again, essentially. Yeah. 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 And, I am I am a collection of molecules. When I come into contact with things that I am made of, yeah. like you know, like hydrogen, the proteins. Oxygen, well, the yeah. proteins are in um, uh, well, the, like the amino acids that are in um my food. Mm. Um, yeah. like you know, all like the car the carbohydrates that become all all of that. When I come across that, I consume it. Yeah, I'm breathing in oxygen, no, 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 no. and I make more of myself. Yeah. yeah, like it's the exact same thing. Just it's so many such a higher level of complexity. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it it's so just much. so impossible to get your head around because you. Because of the fact that you have a brain and you are th you think you think you're thinking, um, as opposed to the possibility is that thinking is happening and you're experiencing it. Yeah. Um, although that might not even be how it works either. Um, like because we are conscious, we think that our consciousness is what causes us to make decisions and um, and eat food and choose a partner and carry on living and have children, etc. Um, but it might be just that that is. That is just happening on an extremely complex, massive scale, and you're just experiencing it for some reason. Yeah. 
or maybe it even that process makes you like that this is my favorite theory of consciousness is like the 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 structure of your brain um in order for it to uh sort of act as one system creates a simulation of a person in order to basically simulate the what what how to regulate the needs of the entire organism yeah it's just so <laughs> weird <laughs> but also when it's doing when it's simulating that person your brain is not letting that simulated person know what everything that's going on no right it's just giving it like it's, symbols it's yeah. it's it's tricking that it, it's uh, oh my god what's amazing is it is tricking your brain is tricking the simulate like let's go down that sort of like yeah. sort of uh, theory hypothesis that you've got there your brain is then um in, in that in that sort of model of the world it's tricking the simulated person that it is created into thinking that it is in control of the entire system when in actuality the deeper level of the brain is in complete control and is only feeding the information to the consciousness yeah. Yeah. that the consciousness needs to be able to perform its job but the consciousness is so bloody selfish and like arrogant that it <laughs> like completely ignores everything else and thinks that all there is is itself yeah the simplest way that, to explain that is like you don't actually want to put like if you see a pie you don't want to you don't want to care about putting what the pie actually is in your mouth you don't want to you conscious experiencer don't want to like press physical matter into a hole in your face uh you want to experience the nice feeling your brain gives you when you press physical matter into a hole in your face mm. um you don't actually want to have sex for example you just want the physical experience of what you are given when you have sex. You don't want to do any of the things you actually I would, do. I, you I want the say, experience that you are given by your brain when you do those things. I would argue that you don't want at all. I'd argue that you're stupid and your brain just like pushes you places and makes you think that you want it. Yeah. Right? So my like my brain right now is saying, hey, hey you, you, you know that thing down down here, down down <laughs> like in your abdomen yeah. that you that you never that you never think about or feel? You're feeling it now. Heartless. You know what to do. You know what to do. You gotta put. You gotta put matter inside of you. You gotta cram it in there. You gotta Shove do it. it. In your face and out. I'm like, I guess I want to eat. Ooh. But like, <laughs> I think even the want is like an illusion almost. Yeah. You know I mean, it's just like oh, my brain is. My guess. I guess I want it. But the brain is just, like it's manipulating. The, yeah. The deeper brain is just telling you so that wants exist. When ultimately, the like. It's Why are we stuck Jedi in mind? this yeah. experience? <laughs> it's a Jedi mind trick. But it's you do want to eat. Oh, I do. Ooh. What That's I think is really interesting, though, because ultimately, when you look at it, um, when you look at it on a sort of level of simpler forms of life, we feel the need to almost describe them in humanish terms as with with also almost their own sense of consciousness. Like it's very hard to avoid, and maybe it's a facet of our language, but it's very hard to avoid saying bacteria want X or um, a constituent part of you wants Y. Yeah. Right. It, it's it, it's very difficult not to put wants and needs. When ultimately, there's no wants or needs. There's just does. Yes. Yeah, but I think the the thing I find interesting about that is that that is all often talked about in a way of like we shouldn't um, project onto our onto like lower life forms this sort of um, want this uh, this like anthropomorphization of it um, because it might not want things. And I would say that an alternative way of viewing that is to say that. Um, Take the want out of the equation for a second. Just look at the behavior, and you can you can equate, um, you know, human being, like the organism human being collects food and eats it. That is what happens, mm -hmm. right? And you can say tiny little tardigrade collects matter and puts it in itself. Then, if you want to, then say want, you know, talk about want in that way, as in what is the what is the um, natural process that both of those organisms go through, which is mm. that they both gather, um, they both gather uh, matter, and they process that matter into more of themselves. Whether that's through making their body and repairing it, or making more copies of themselves, and then you can then have a separate conversation about the subjective experience of wanting. But those two things are somewhat the same thing, yeah. just on a different scale. And then can we get back to that kind of thing that you mentioned, wherein because this system has become so gosh darn complex. It's almost like w one way to deal with that seems to be creating the illusion of need and want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of just to do what happens. Yeah. Right. Because like ants, we like I, I feel like I've I mentioned ants like 
<laughs> sporadically on this podcast, but I found them very interesting, right? You, any sort of you social insect like that, wherein it almost seems like they're not thinking or they're, they're more just kind of doing. They're more just kind of carrying out, like they receive an input and they just, they carry, they just do the thing. They don't, they, there's, like, n- there's not much choice or like, yeah. or anything. Like you, you can see a rat and you're like, oh, that rat has chosen to do something. That bird has chosen to do something. It's very easy to say that. Yeah. But with ants, it almost seems as though they just have like like some very simple bits of code mm-hmm. and they just do that. Mm-hmm. They just, mm-hmm. they carry it out. Yeah. If X, then Y. I think the thing is our consciousness is so complex and we don't understand it that we sort of fill that gap in with want, need, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So when you look at an ant and you go, oh, ant receives this uh, the stimuli from the environment and then ant does this thing, right? That, and you, mm. don't, you don't project consciousness onto that um, or like agency, individual self-agency onto the, uh, onto the uh, ant. Mm-hmm. But then we do for ourselves and mm. we do for bird. Mm. And what, I mean, what, what might actually be the case is that bird actually does that too it's just so much more complex because of the number of neurons and the number of interactions involved and yes bird then does have maybe more complex a more complex self simulation running and we have an even more complex self simulation running but we might have the same the, the actual level of agency we have um as that self might be a complete illusion oh no, yeah i think i think agency is absolutely an illusion i think honestly the that's that's what i was that's what i was kind of trying to get, yeah. get at, like sort of get at earlier that the agency that the self believes it has probably an illusion i think we've got we've got some studies that are like that kind of hint towards it being um personal agency being less than um sort of less than sort of uh strict as we as we thought it might be as in like we seem everyone kind of thinks i have free will i can do what i want me the the person the consciousness can make a choice yeah but it seems that there is the underlying processes going on in the brain that kind of precede those choices. Yeah. And so that idea of free will of the self then becomes a little bit more murky. As a, and, I, sorry. So, and for all we know, ultimately, we don't know what the ant illusion is, right? If the ant has an illusion at all, right? Which mm. is, I think, interesting. Like, it's kind of what you're talking about there, that like, as it gets more complex, like they're probably more complex like sort of um, self simulations but Mm. we don't know what that sort of simulation or illusion is like to experience for each individual organism 